It was January 1991 and the world was about to witness one of the biggest confrontations in recent history. Defying the demands of the United Nations, Saddam Hussein ordered the invasion of the state of Kuwait. Faced with this situation, the United States could not sit idly by and decided to launch a massive air offensive against the Iraqi troops. This conflict, known as Operation Desert Storm, was an impressive display of cutting-edge military technology. The United States brought its most advanced arsenal into play, stealth bombers, cruise missiles, laser-guided bombs, and infrared night strike teams. The coalition against Iraq was fully determined to drive the invading troops out of Kuwait. That day, the aircraft carriers USS Saratoga and USS Kennedy teamed up for a crucial mission. On board of them were the impressive F-14 Tomcats, incredible fighter planes that would demonstrate all their might and become true heroes of the war. Today we will go through the most important details of the participation of these planes in Operation Desert Storm. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's start with the story of its gestation. In the opening decades of the Cold War, the Soviet Union's long-range patrol aircraft and bombers posed a threat to U.S. advances. For that reason, it was necessary to have a fleet of defensive fighter aircraft capable of engaging these bombers at high altitude, beyond visual range. That's when the iconic F-14 Tomcat emerged and was pitched as Grumman's solution to this challenge. Developed specifically for the United States Navy, the Tomcat was a twin-engine supersonic attack fighter with sweep capability designed to operate from U.S. aircraft carriers. These aircraft were built taking into account the experience gained in dogfights against the fearsome MiGs during the Vietnam War. Because of this, the F-14 Tomcat was intended as a versatile strike fighter capable of carrying a wide range of air-to-ground weaponry in different configurations. In addition to carrying air-to-air missiles such as the AIM-7, AIM-9, and M-54 Phoenix, it had the ability to engage multiple air threats at ranges greater than 90 miles. Its primary roles ranged from precise strikes against ground targets to ensuring air superiority. Su Primer Vuelo Fue en December de 1970 Its first flight was on December 1970. But, undoubtedly its most memorable performance took place in January 1991, the USS Saratoga and the aircraft carrier USS Kennedy joined forces to attack the critical center of air defense operations in Illinois, a vital point for Iraqi forces. The task force included two squadrons equipped with the new Tomcat model, the F-14A+, powered by General Electric F-110 engines. Commander Bob Davis of the 32nd Attack Fighter Squadron was leading the first group to head to the area of their objective and had four of these powerful aircraft. Alongside him were several fearless and skilled pilots, ready to take on any challenge that arose. It is important to note that, at that time, the United States Navy adopted a robust delay and jam strategy for its combat aircraft. The F-14 fighter-bomber pilots were given clear instructions to stay close to the strike team and protect it at all costs. The main mission was to protect the electronic warfare and assigned aircraft, using all their skills to hinder and delay any attempt by enemy interceptors to attack their valuable aircraft. Instead of pursuing targets and risking exposure of U.S. forces, their focus was on thwarting enemy attacks and providing mission security. As the planes took off, a surprise awaited the pilots, as a command aircraft controller detected four groups of aircraft approaching. These were Iraqi interceptors, but, curiously, they were not declared as enemies. Commander Davis and his team knew something was off. They couldn't understand why someone would be performing combat air patrol duties over that airfield on the first day of the war. Tension was in the air as the planes closed in on the target. 
Suddenly, the F-14s found themselves face to face with four Iraqi MiG-29 fighters, poised to counter the Tomcats and deny them the opportunity to fire their long-range missiles. Commander Davis could take no chances and ordered his formation to light up the enemy planes with their missiles, ready to attack if necessary. The combat was intense and the sky was filled with daring maneuvers. The Iraqi planes were trying to evade the F-14 attacks, but the American pilots were determined to protect their fellow passengers and accomplish their mission. The Iraqis reacted quickly, and while one division headed southwest along a desert road, the others turned north and northeast. Only one of the MiG-25s attempted to engage the U.S. Navy formation and decided to turn right in the direction of one of the EA-6B Prowler aircraft the F-14s were protecting, but was met with a fierce response. At that crucial moment, the EA-6B Prowler aircraft emitted a deafening noise, blocking any attempt by the Iraqi pilot to attack. With determination and skill, the F-14 pilots thwarted the enemy aircraft's attempts to engage the American formation. Eventually, the Iraqi pilot was forced to give up and fly away, joining the rest of the planes heading north. Despite this small victory, Commander Davis was not content and wanted to make sure that the Iraqi planes were fully withdrawn. For that reason, he decided to split his team and send two Tomcats after the four Rebel MiGs heading southwest. Lieutenant Commander Dave Parsons, a skilled radar intercept officer, was leading one of the Tomcats. Alongside him, Lieutenant Voodoo Vors and Lieutenant Buna Washington flew as high-value escorts, ready to meet any challenge and protect their fellow flyers. As they pursued the enemy aircraft, Parsons and his team closely monitored the situation determined to keep the prowlers safe and engage the MiGs if necessary. As the tension rose, Parsons detected the presence of two F-15 Eagles in the area. These U.S. aircraft joined the formation to support the F-14s on their mission. Together, they made a formidable team and continued to pursue enemy aircraft. The story of Operation Desert Storm continued for 42 days, with numerous clashes between U.S. Air Forces and well-equipped and combat-experienced Iraqi troops. The 32nd Attack and Fighter Squadron, which featured F-14s, flew daily missions over Iraq, including supersonic runs over highly defended al Qaim. Although these aircraft proved their worth in the conflict, their primary role was in escort and protection duties, as air-to-air -air missions were primarily assigned to F-15 Eagles. Ultimately, the Tomcat was not used in the strike role and many naval officers felt it was a missed opportunity. Despite this, the story of bravery and skill of the F-14 pilots in Operation Desert Storm will never be forgotten. Years later, in February 2006, the United States Navy decided to officially retire the F-14 Tomcat, marking the end of an era in military aviation history. During their combat period, Iranian F-14s have scored at least 50 air-to-air -air victories against Iraqi MiGs and only one Iranian F-14 sustained damage after being hit by a nearby MiG-21 when it exploded. This conflict became a pivotal moment in history, where the F-14s and their pilots demonstrated their courage and skill in accomplishing their mission. We reached the end of our video and we want to thank you for joining us. We will meet again in the next episode of Military Aviation.